Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness and mercy that you've shown us. We thank you, Lord, that you've only begun to show yourself mighty on our behalf, Lord. We give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you, everybody, for your testimonies and uh, prayer requests. Praise God. God is good. I want to thank Sheila again. Her and John, I mean, there were some anxious moments, but uh, praise the Lord, we have a new roof, yeah. all new siding, new gutters and downspouts, and it wouldn't have happened if Sheila hadn't have taken the step of faith and yeah. believed and passed it on to us, praise the Lord, and I do appreciate it. Yes. You won't know how much I appreciate it. I mean, this is a lot of money that would have come out of our pockets. We never had to spend a dime, so thank Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 With that in mind, happy birthday, Sheila. Praise the Lord. We're a couple days early, but happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sheila. Happy birthday to you, and we won't say anything else. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Sheila. She is a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Happy birthday. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know why frogs are so happy? They eat whatever bugs them. There are some people who don't actually like this part of the service. Seriously. I know it's hard to believe, but what do you call the ghost of a chicken? Poltergeist. Now, I have some jokes about unemployed people, but none of them work, so use them. Two windmills. We see these all the time now in Iowa. It's a big deal, right? So these two windmills are standing in a wind farm, and one of them asks, what's your favorite kind of music? And the other says, well, I'm a big metal fan. <laughs> big, I'm a big metal fan, yeah. praise the Lord. Time travel. Yeah, praise the Lord. Time travel jokes are my favorite. Of course, you would know that. I will. Never, never mind. <laughs> Now this is really uh, this is something that really got. It's weird how kind of innocuous things end up leading you into serious stuff, you know, and kind of deeper things. So last week, Mike uh, Gerlach showed me this uh, picture on his phone of uh, a nativity scene with the DeLorean. Remember Back to the Future? Yeah. Cra crashed into the nativity scene. Oh. You know, this is Back to the Future. Speaking of time travel. So uh, that got me to thinking, and that's frightening when that happens, <laughs> praise the Lord. But actually, if I could find that, I would have that in my front yard this Christmas. I mean, it was, that was cool to, when you think, because I didn't recognize the car at first, and I just thought, oh, what a horrible accident. And then I realized, whoa, this is, somebody went all the way back, praise the Lord, made it all the way back to the birth, amen. Yep. So anyway, it was really cool. With that in mind, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 4 and 5. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, yes. having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Praise God. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Now, this scripture is actually talking about, if you, I, I didn't put it into total context just for the sake of time, but verse 6 is talking about uh, an evil person. In other words, he's actually talking about the devil. 
And so what the devil's trying to get us to do is to eat his lies, his words, right? Remember Jesus said, you have to eat my flesh, drink my blood, and they all went, whoa, what's he talking about? Well, he's the word of God. And then it tells us in other places we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the, uh, the mouth of God. So this is actually talking about the devil's trying to get us to feed on lies. Jesus is trying to get us to feed on the word. And so he tells us, for as you think in your heart, in other words, what you're putting in there is what you are. Right? So if you eat and drink the devil or his lies, that's what you're going to end up with. If you eat and drink the word of God, then you get the benefits from that. Right? So God created everything to fulfill, <coughs> to fulfill a plan or a purpose. And uh, you were chosen in him before the world began. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. I'm going to take a little time here to get through this, but praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Verse 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. So God chose when each of us were going to be born. And uh, none of us are random. It might seem like that our lives may have been kind of chaotic and crazy, but we're not random. We were here for a reason, and we were chosen for a time such as this. Amen? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 2. time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. So there's something in each one of us that's being called by eternity. Amen? That's drawing us to eternity. The scripture says God has set eternity in man's hearts or in our hearts. Amen? So we live in time and space natural sense realm, right? But time and space are connected to eternity. And God has put the Holy Spirit in you. And that calls the unseen into the visible or into the seen, right? Yeah. So it's a piece of eternity that he gives us, the Holy Spirit, to deliver in time and in space or here on earth during your lifetime. That's what the Holy Spirit is for, to give us a piece of eternity to connect time and space with eternity. Amen? Yeah. Psalms 42 and verse 7. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. Amen? Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. So deep calling unto deep, right? God has done something awesome here. He lives in eternity, but he put us in time so that others can see a piece of eternity that's him. Amen? For people that don't believe in anything after this, this is it. Time and space is all there is, and once that's gone, you just rot away, and that's the end of it, right? So God has put a piece of eternity into time and space, which is us, our physical being, so that they can see. So there is a witness of eternity in this world. Amen? Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. There's none else. I am God, and there's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. So first he establishes the end before the beginning. I mean, you've got to think God, the way God thinks. I mean, we're not, we're, we can't, but we can in a way because we have the mind of Christ. We just have to think outside of the box, outside of our own natural uh, kind of intellect, right? Mm -hmm. So he establishes the end before the beginning, and that, all that means simply is that he finishes things first in the spirit realm, right? Because that's eternal, right? 
And so then he goes back and he starts them up in the physical realm. Yes. Praise the Lord. And then second, he reveals the end result of something when it's just beginning. Wow. Praise God. Mm -hmm. He is Alpha, Omega, beginning and ending. Amen. He's outside of time, but he's placed us in time. So it's true that that's true of everything about God. Amen. Everything he says in his word, it's already done. It was done in eternity, right? It was done in the beginning. The end was already done, right? The way it manifests is by us who are in time and space, right? Whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, whether it's deliverance, what, whatever it might be, amen? Look at Ecclesiastes again, chapter 3, verse 11. I, I just love this. He hath made everything beautiful in his time, or you could say in eternity. Also, he has set the world in their hearts. So he set this in our hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. So look at how God works. This is, this is amazing. First, he tells us what the end of the matter is. By his stripes you were healed. Yes. Right? Whatever it might be. Right? He, first, he gives us the end of the matter. And then he backs up and he begins the process of fulfilling that end through us by faith. Does this make any sense to anybody besides me? Yes. Praise the Lord, I'm still seeing the DeLorean. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? He's, everything has been completed. Everything is done. But he uses time and space to bring eternity or to bring those completed things into this realm. And the only way they come into this realm is by faith. Yeah. That's why he needs us. That's why we have to operate by faith. That's why we have to operate by the Word of God and not by our natural senses, right? So uh, Ephesians 1 Verse 4. So he starts out with the end, and then he backs up and begins that process of fulfilling that end through us. And he does it by faith, right? So according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So basically, God completed us before he created us. Praise the Lord. It's amazing Right? But we were, create, we were in Him before the foundation of the world. Before there was anything. Before there was a yes. world. We already existed in Him. Yes. Right? This is my theory. This is the, kind of the thesis I'm working on here, the theory. I think it's not theory. It's fact. It's just that it's just so convoluted in the way that we think. Or the way we would think about it. Right? So He completed us before He created us. And not only does he establish our end, our beginning is proof of our completion in him. Whoa, I mean, that just makes me want to shout, praise yes. the Lord. The fact that I exist is yes. proof, amen, that I am a finished work, that I am complete in Christ. Yes. Amen? <laughs> praise the Lord. We've got to understand our end doesn't look anything like our beginning. We were perfect in him in the beginning. Right? Yep. We're seeing, amen, yes. what we think of as the beginning is actually the ending. It's actually the wrap-up. It's, it's the finishing yes. of, the, of the product, amen, that was in the beginning. Yes. Praise the Lord. In the beginning was God. Yes. Right? The Word was with God. The Word was God. We were born to manifest something that's already finished. Amen. Well, we're talking about healing. We're talking about deliverance. We're, whatever it is, we were manifested, amen, simply to bring about something that God had already done. Because he's got to have access here for it to manifest, for it to be a physical reality, amen, in this realm. And that's why we have to live by faith. Looking forward with expectation for what God has already completed is faith. I mean, how, how can you have faith in something that doesn't exist? So he's trying to get us to understand all our faith is, is in something that's already done. Amen? Because if it's not true, otherwise you're only going to believe what you see with your physical eyes. Rather than what God has already done. That's why we have to confess his word. Amen? His words which are 
acts that he has already accomplished. Yes. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. That's why we say what this says, because this is already done. Yes. This is a finished work. This is a completed thing. Yes. And so the only way we can ever experience that is by saying it. Amen? Yes. Amen. His word is finished. It's accomplished. It's the truth. Yes. Amen? Regardless of all the facts that we're looking at and dealing with, this is the truth. That's right. And it's a finished work. Amen? That's how we know it's the truth. Right. It doesn't change. It doesn't alter. It doesn't change with circumstances or situations. Right. It's always the same because God doesn't change. Yes. Amen? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14. Here's the beauty of it. No. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 14. That's okay. Praise the Lord. That's good, too. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear him or acknowledge him. Not be afraid of him, but go, wow, that's God. Right, right. Amen? He has placed eternity in each of us. Amen? Yes. As believers, he puts eternity in us, which is his finished work, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, Psalms 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We desire it because it's in us to desire it. Praise the Lord. God put the plan for your life in you when you were born. The plan for your life that was clear back before the foundation of the world. When you got born, he put that plan into you. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Now, before I read this, I'm going to just say, uh, Ephesians 2.10, the scripture said, Jesus, some people came to him and said, uh, good master, what must I do to be, and Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's only one that's good, and that's God. Right. right? So that's the context here. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That could literally be transferred unto God works, because there's only one that's good, right? So if there's good works, it has to be God works, because humans aren't capable of producing good, no. pure, right? So uh, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for the purpose of God works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. When did he ordain it? Before the foundation of the world. And then it comes to reality when we are born into this world and then receive Christ. Yes. Are you still with me? Praise the Lord. So, see, we're not saved by good works. Or God works. But we're saved for the purpose of doing God works. Yes. Praise the Lord. Once we're saved, once we are uh, restored to before the foundation of the world, and that's what happens when we get born again. We get restored to our true identity, yeah. to what we were before the foundation, before there was anything but God right. and us in him, right? We receive the Holy Spirit. And we receive the Holy Spirit so we can believe and then act on God's word. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Not just to take us away to heaven or something, but so that we can do God works here. The things that we were created for before we existed. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this just gives you a buzz, right? But it's the truth. I mean, it's 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't believe. And if we can't believe, we can't act, right? That's what I was talking about earlier. First, you have the thought. The thought then leads to the words. If you don't have the thoughts, you're not going to say anything. You just have to be careful of the thoughts that you speak. They need to be coordinated or they need to be in line with what God has said because that's who you really are. That's your true identity. That's, that's the only way your truth or your reality will manifest who you really are. Right. Amen. Who you were in him before the foundation of the world. Who you got born again to be. Yeah. 
that what you were before. That's the end. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought yes. to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. Cast down anything yes. that's contrary to the Word. In other words, don't eat stuff that didn't come from Jesus. Right. Don't be eating. On, you know, that's what happened. This whole thing started with a, uh, a bad eating habit. Right. I mean, somebody ate something they shouldn't have eaten. So the, the cure to that is to eat the right stuff. Right. I mean, this is what Sheila's talking about, right? You don't, you know, you just don't gobble up the sugar and the starches and the, there's stuff we should eat. That, that isn't necessarily good for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It won't give you the life that God wants you to live. Now, I know that's a natural thing, but it, it all relates, amen, to the Spirit as well. Praise the Lord. Look at Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5 now. This is, Crazy. Praise the Lord. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, or in other words, wisdom, real knowledge, is like, a, is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. This is kind of like the deep calleth unto deep, right? Yeah. So counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Okay? The metaphor here is a well, right? Now look at John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. A man of understanding will draw it out. So Jesus said in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he says to draw it out, right? If you believe the word, you will speak it. And it's like drawing water from a deep well. Praise the Lord. Now, if you believe what God has said, and what he has placed in you by his word, you're going to figuratively lower a bucket into this deep well, the water of your spirit, amen, and draw out what God has given, yes. making it a reality. Yes. What's already in you? What was in you before the foundation of the world? What was in you once you were restored to that identity, right? Yep. That's why the devil wants us to eat his lies, mm -hmm. to drink his lies, because he knows if we draw from the well of the spirit, all we're going to get is truth. That, that identifies us and produces in us everything we have need of. Because right. God had a plan for our life. He had a purpose for our life before the foundation of the world. And he knew everything we would need. He knew the end yeah. from the beginning. He started at the, be at the end and goes back to the beginning. Yeah. Right? Everything we have need of, I don't care what it is, right. it's already here. We just got to yes. draw it out. And how do you do that? By the word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Does this make sense? Glory yes. to God. Amen. Yes. Proverbs 23, verse 7. I'm not just trying to be intentionally weird here. I'm just saying th it, there's a natural yeah. reality to this stuff that can be, that can be explained. Yeah. It just doesn't match the natural way that we would think of it. But it's already done. I mean, God has done this. He had this. He, he, he just thinks so far outside the box that we, it's hard for us to identify with it. And so we end up making rules. If you do this, if you do that, see, we end up confessing the word. Of course, but why? Because if I don't draw this out of me, I don't get it. Yeah. I never get the benefit from it. And it's already here. It's not I'm going to get it from someplace else. It was in me. He put it in me for yes. God works, for God to show himself yes. out of me. Yes. Healing, deliverance, prosperity, whatever it is. Right. Security, you know. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. Again, this is the devil saying, eat this crap I'm throwing at you. Eat the, you know, the dysfunction. Eat the lies. Eat the sickness. Eat the disease. Eat the poverty. Eat the, eat the I'll never be anymore. I'll never arrive. I'll never be what I want to be. I'll never do what God intended for you. Yes, you will. You have to. Yes. The fact that you're here is proof of it. Yes. 
Praise the Lord. I think so. Amen. The fact that you exist as a believer is the proof of your finished work, of your being everything that God created you to be. Praise the Lord. This is why we can't let our eyes, our natural eyes, determine what our hearts believe. They don't, they don't work together that way. He said, eyes they have, but they see not. Ears they have, but they hear not. Now, he's not saying, you know, they can't see their hand in front of their face. He said, they can't see anything spiritual. They can't see their reality. They can't, they can't believe who and what they were intended to be. Praise the Lord. For we walk, the scripture says, or we live by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. Or we are supposed to walk according to what's in our hearts. Right? That's why he says it's not what comes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of him. Yeah. It's not what people are saying to you. It's not what you're experiencing this way. It's how you're responding to that experience is what determines you. It's what identifies you. Amen? Because if you're saying what you're getting... You'll never see the finished product until you die. Right. You're supposed to experience it here and now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Faith is simply seeing the future in the present. Praise yeah. the Lord. It's, it's simply seeing what is yet to be right. now. Yeah. That's how God works. Yeah. Didn't he? He said, let there be light. There wasn't any light. He just spoke the future. Of what would be if he said what he believed. Right. And as soon as he said it, what happened? Light. And everything after that was, and God said, and God said, and God said. And it was, and it was, and it was, and it still is. Still is. Praise the Lord. Yep. When you've got faith, you're seeing things that were in you. Now listen, uh, let me say this. When you're using faith, what all you're really doing is seeing things that were in you before the foundation of the world. Things that you, by the Spirit, know are already true. Mm -hmm. The conflict is, this doesn't know it, but this does. And that's why you have to renew your mind to yeah. the Word of God, or you'll never be able to identify with your identity, with who you truly are in Christ, of who you were saved to be. Right. Restored back to your original condition and purpose. Amen? Right. See, think about it this way. This is exactly what happened with Jesus. He came from God. He was already finished, a finished work in God, yeah. right? Wasn't he? Yeah. Came out from God. He ends up here on planet Earth. Now, he didn't know he was God. He had to go to the Word to find out who he was and what he was. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel, right? To heal the sick, to open the blind eyes and all that. That wasn't something that... It was something that was in his spirit. It wasn't here. It was here. And it wasn't until he started operating from here that it got to here and he was able to see the finish. We got to see yes. God yeah. in the beginning. Yes. In Jesus, the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. We beheld his glory. In other words, we got to see eternity past. We got to see the end right. from the beginning. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are his workmanship. We are in Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. If you're operating by sight, you see problems. You see challenges. They're all around us. They're everywhere in this planet. That's why Jesus said, you know, in this world, you're going to have tribulations. Be a good cheer. I overcame. When did you overcome, Lord? In the beginning. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Bills, health issues, relationships. So the truth is living by sight will kill you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Living by faith releases all that God has ever done for you. Yes. And all that God is in you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Genesis 126. You don't have to go there, Peter. We all know it. It's, and God created man in his own image. After his likeness, he created them, right? Yes. Image and likeness, which means we are created to function like God. Yes. Or to do God works, right? In other words, to live according to the eternal nature of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. As he functions, we should function. How does God function? By faith. Yes. 
say, why does God need faith? It's the only thing, the only thing that works. Yeah. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. The truth is, without faith, you can't even communicate with him. Right. It's like speaking two different languages. Yeah. The only language he understands is faith. Right. So if you're talking negative, he's not hearing. Yeah. I mean, that's why a lot of times what we think of as prayer, it's not prayer at all. If, if all I'm doing is saying, oh, God, what a mess. How can't you do something about this? Oh, Lord. He's not even listening to that. He can't even hear it. It's like you're speaking gibberish, right? Because all he understands is faith. That's why we have to come to him with the word. Lord, your word says that by your stripes I'm healed. Hallelujah. I claim that healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for healing me before the foundation of the world. Thank you for healing me before I ever had a body that needed to be healed. That's right. You put healing in me. You put eternity in me. You put you in me. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he, come, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, or that seek him by faith. Yes. Lord. Hallelujah. Because we're in God's likeness, if we try to function in any other way than faith, we malfunction. And how many of you know malfunctioning equipment is it not a good thing? Not only will it not do what it was created to do, but it'll screw up everything else around it that it wasn't created to operate in. Amen? I mean, if you don't believe me, just disconnect the tie rods on your car and get on the freeway. It'll malfunction in a hurry. It won't, not only will it not steer, it'll ram you right into a dozen other vehicles. Praise the Lord. So, as I said before, thoughts are the most important thing. But words are the most powerful. The reason thoughts are important is because they lead to words. But the words are what are powerful. It's my little uh, thing about coming here and, and knowing, thought, having all these negative thoughts, but just not saying anything. Thank God there wasn't a lot of people around me because I was ready to talk, praise the Lord. But God kept me from it so he could show me something so critically important in all of our lives. Now, I knew it. You know, and we have experiential knowledge of things sometimes, but it doesn't always stay with us. That's why we have to have landmarks and things to go back and say, yeah, well, he was faithful here. He did it that time. He'll do it again. But this is one of those kind of things where not really an epiphany, but just a kind of a slap across the face and say, wake up, man. I told you. Yo, this is how it works. You know, I was just so grateful that I didn't let my mouth run away with me. Praise the Lord. Jesus was filled with faith. Why? Because he said, my father and I are one. Right? We're connected. Eternity is in me. Right? That's why I can do the works that I do. It's not me that does the works. It's the father that's in me. He had already finished these works. Amen. Before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. Mark 4, verse 39 and 40. So they're in the boat, and the storms are raging, and, and uh, the waves are crashing, and everybody thinks, oh, my God, we're going to die. It's a horrible storm. And Jesus wakes up, rebukes the wind, said to the sea, peace be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, if you have faith, everybody's going to have storms. I mean, there, there just are storms in life. It, it happens. Out of the clear blue, all of a sudden, bang, a storm blows up, and, and you're not expecting it because it looked like everything was good, right? That's the way they were when they got in the boat. It didn't look like it was going to storm. They get halfway to their destination, and all of a sudden, this horrible typhoon thing comes up and freaks them all out. And Jesus just said, if you had faith, you wouldn't have been frightened by this. You have the Word right here with you. The Word can't fail. If you put your faith in the word and not in the circumstance. Praise the Lord. If you really believe, storms won't scare you. They may mess with you a little bit, but they won't scare you. Because you know the storm chaser's in you. That's right. Praise the Lord. He can calm the storm. Just all you got to do is believe. Yeah. 
and you'll find that the storm didn't really even exist or it wasn't near as bad as you thought it was and it was all of these other things and so on and so forth, right? Yes. Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Yeah. Praise the Lord. To them who have been receded in their original identity, who have been restored to their purpose in God, which is to reveal eternity, to reveal the finished works. Amen? That's how God functions. Right. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. And this is just a, it's just a validation that what God says He does. Mm -hmm. Amen? I will hasten my word to perform it. In other words, I'm saying my word so that my word can become reality. Praise the Lord. And we work the same way if we're operating as God's children. Yes. We hasten His word for it to be performed. Yes. We speak the truth. Hallelujah. And that just demonstrates that God always brings his word into being. Yes. Not just in the person of Jesus, but period. Mm -hmm. His word always becomes manifested. It always becomes, you could say, flesh. It always comes into time or into the sense realm, into the flesh realm. Yes. So that eternity can be revealed. Yeah. Praise God. In Genesis, you know, God said it was the word with God, was God, and manifested. We beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. This is God. Yes. Praise the Lord. But it doesn't manifest, amen, until it comes into flesh. Yes. And then the spirit and the word come together and create the original intent or the original purpose for our lives. See, a lot of the crap that the devil throws at us, it isn't like God didn't know it, mm -hmm. but it's an opportunity for God to show himself yes. real. Yes. It's kind of like all things work together for good, for God, yep. to them who love God, or to those who are called according to his purpose, to those who have been born again. Yep. So it isn't God creating this stuff. It's God saying, okay, I'll just show you healing then. Yes. Cancer, here's healing. Yes. Poverty, here's financial breakthrough. Yes. Amen. Dysfunctional relationship, here's restoration. Yes. Amen. Yes. So the enemy meant it for evil, and God says, fine. All you're going to do is reveal the truth if yes. they'll believe yes. what I have said. If they'll yes. believe what's in them, the they'll see the end yes. from the beginning the same as I did. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Thoughts are more important, amen, than words because words are produced by thoughts. Yeah. That's why your mind has to be stayed on the word. Because as a man thinketh, so is he, right? Yeah. In other words, you create your own identity. Yeah. I mean in the sense of what we believe or don't believe. Words are the most powerful. See, thoughts design the future, but words create the future. This is God. God thought, and then he spoke. He saw it. It was dark. So he's thinking, that's not cool. So what does he do? He speaks. Thoughts are powerful, but they're not as powerful as words. Thoughts design things, and words bring them into reality. Yeah. It's a creative force. See, the thing that separates us from the animals is we have the ability to create. And that doesn't mean just artistically, you know, sculpting or painting or writing poetry or whatever it might be. It means we have the ability to create things by our words. That's the creative process. We think, we see. I don't like that. Well, then say something about it. Don't agree with it. Yeah. Don't embrace it. Rebuke it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? That creates something. The thought 
is it your way of designing or dealing with the obstacle or the situation. And then when you speak, that's what changes it. See, we've got to be consistent here. This is the problem. We have a tendency to kind of ebb and flow with this. And I, I, I mean, I'm guilty too. That's what I was t- told you this story about coming down here. Everything in me wanted to just get on the phone and bless this guy out and tell him what a jerk and a liar and a, th- you know, no integrity kind of individual that he was. I mean, I was, I was upset. I'm thinking they're, they're going to rip me off because I trusted him. Yeah. So it was more about me feeling like I'd failed myself, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but keeping my mouth shut. Yeah. See, I was designing yeah. a scenario here. I mean, don't we? I mean, how many times have you said, oh, geez, I wish I would have said, I wish I would have said that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was perfect for the time. We're designing something. And it's when we open our mouth, we give life to it. Yes. Whatever it is. That's why we have to have the right thoughts so we get the right design so that when we speak, we get the result that we're really after. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes, Satan knows this. Amen. And that's why he wants you to speak negative. Yes, that's why he wants you to focus on yes. the natural stuff so your effectiveness of fulfilling your true self yes. is negated. It's neutralized. Praise the Lord. And that's when you think, well, I'm just a loser. I just, you know, everything bad always happens to me. What you're buying in to the crap that he's selling yeah. that is not true. Um, Philippians 4, uh, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. Now, here's a big thought. Yes. Life is the way you see it. And that's your choice. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I mean, we've been given free will. You can choose to identify with your true identity in Christ, which is based on the Word of God. Or you can believe the crap that's all around you. And then you become AKA loser. <laughs> right? Amen. When, when we really uh, see with eyes of faith, we begin to see our created identity. And, we be, and because of that, we begin to see our true life Amen manifested. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. My true life, there is no sickness or disease. No. My true life, there's no lack. There's no poverty. No. There's no need. Right. My true life, all things work together for good. Yes. Amen. But I have to see it that way. I have to have eyes to see the truth. Or I'm stuck with the natural. Yes. I don't get the eternal if I'm living based on the natural. Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord answered to me, excuse me, the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. Now, remember we said the beginning from the end, right? At the end, it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So what's he saying? Who you were created to be. Amen? What you were created to be. That awaits an appointed time. Now, verse 3, if you could back up to that for a minute. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You may tarry, but it's not tarrying, right? So this this is concerning the end. It's not like the end of your life or the end of an age. But it's the end of or the fulfillment of your reality in Christ. Praise the Lord. 
remember, time and space, are, they're connected to eternity. Yes. And that's what he's basically saying to us here. It speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. Right. The end is already finished. And it's not a lie. It's the truth. But you have to tarry for it, or you have to believe for it. Though it's not tearing, it's already done. It's already finished. Amen? If you're not seeing it, it's because you haven't gotten there yet. You haven't arrived to the place where you can believe for it. In other words, God is saying, how I created you in Christ before the foundation of the world is truth. Don't freak out about it. Don't worry about it. Even if it seems like it isn't happening, it has to come to pass. If you can believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. In the meantime, we're told that uh, the righteous will live by their faith. And this is where walking by faith and not by sight comes in. It's tearing. Not the finished work. It was finished before the foundation of the world. What's tearing is our seeing the manifestation of it. And that's because we do, unless we walk by faith or live by faith, we don't get to see it. Amen? This is, uh, somebody was talking about this. This is the thing I think that, you know, we would get to heaven and the only tears that are shed there is briefly, we're going to say, oh my God, what well, might have been. Well, I could, because when you get there, I promise now you're seeing the end. Yeah. Amen? And he wanted us to see it here. Yes, yes. And so if we get to heaven and we don't live by faith, we're going to go to heaven. You're still going to go to heaven, but you're going to have to die by faith. Yeah. He wants us to live by faith. Yeah. Right? He wants eternity to come here, yes. not for us to go to eternity. Yes. And ultimately, that is what happens. I mean, when it's yes. all finally wrapped up, it comes back. Eternity yeah. comes back. See, you've got to believe what God has said. And just because it doesn't happen overnight, it's because our faith isn't perfected. But see, it happened before you. It happened for you. Yes. Before you. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So all I'm saying is do what you were born to do. So you can be who you were born to be. Yes. Amen. We'll wrap it up with these two scriptures. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11 1. And we'll close with this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Now faith reveals the end from the beginning. Praise the Lord. Who we are, what we are, and all that God has done in us, through us, and for us. In Jesus' name. Faith. Yeah. How do we get faith? by the word of God, by hearing and hearing and hearing the word yes. of God. By hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God, we begin to see ourselves in that mirror, which is the word of God. We begin to see the finished product. We become an image of Jesus. We are conformed to that image, yes. amen, by this. What image? The image that was before the foundation of the world. The image that came out of God and manifested itself here in the earth. Amen? Yeah. Our purpose. That's the reason we're here. Say <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, I mean, God has got such an amazing, amazing plan. Intricate, involved, and yet so simple. It's all done. It's just a question of believing. We don't have to make it happen. We don't have to do it. We just have to believe it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord yeah. a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Now, this is a, this is a God thing. 12 o'clock.
The buffet is open. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Go in the power of his might.